Yes, so welcome everyone. Um, welcome to uh, one of our first events for our Recipe for Change. Uh, my name is Ranu. I'm from the Community Food Programs. I'm an educator. I'll pass it over to my comrade, Jade. Hi, my name is Jade. I'm also from the Community Food Programs. Uh, I'm super excited to be here with y'all today for Recipe for Change. Oh, cool. So um, I'm going to read um, a little bit of um, information from before. Um, I'm going to share our land acknowledgement. Um, uh, food share is located on the traditional territories of the Windat, Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and the Mississaugas of the Credit. Um, we are grateful to live and work on these lands. We also acknowledge the many people of African descent who are not settlers, but whose Ancestors were forcibly displaced as part of the transatlantic slave trade, brought against their will and made to work on these lands. Um, also a quick note about privacy. Um, this event is being recorded and may be shared in the future on YouTube or social media. If you do not wish to be seen on the recording, please leave your camera off. Uh, you can edit your screen name as well in the menu that appears when you click chat at the bottom of the screen. Um, if you don't mind being on the recording though, we would love to see you. Um, the other thing about our recipes that we'll be using today, um, a detailed in ingredient list for today's class, plus the links to their book in the chat. And a quick shout out to our sponsor. Um, yes. A quick shout out to our sponsor um, is we'd like to thank the sponsor of today. Um, let's see, let me do that. Oh, okay. Um, thank you. <laughs> uh, we'd like to thank the sponsor for today's Recipe for Change programming, uh, Food Share Social Enterprise. Food Share Social Enterprise is the team behind our good food box um, and bulk produce orders that bring fresh high quality produce and other artisan products like locally, locally produced honey and bread to customers across the GTA. While generating revenues that support our core, for, core food justice initiatives in, uh, yes, in 2020, with the help of over 80 partners across the city, the team distributed good food boxes at no cost to folks facing heightened food insecurity due to COVID-19 filled with the same beautiful veggies and fruits that subscribers receive each week. Um, so one more thing uh, is we're having a giveaway. So as a thank you for joining us today, everyone on the call is eligible eligible to get uh, to enter our uh, giveaway draw. So enter your details in the form in the chat and to chat to win a large good food, large food share good food box. The winner will have a box of beautiful fresh produce delivered straight to their door. And for more information, um, visit goodfoodbox.foodshare.net. So that would be goodfoodbox.foodshare.net. All right. So um, yes, those links are right in there. Thanks, Prapti. Um, and yeah, so uh, hopefully one of y'all will win one of those boxes which will probably definitely have cabbage in it, our featured um, veggie for today. So I'll get started on my dish. Um, the dish that I'll be making today is cabbage steaks, um, as well as some Southern fried cabbage. I am from the South. I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana, proudly. And a lot of my family comes from um, Georgia and Florida. So a lot of uh, Southern roots in there. So um, the cabbage steaks is a bit new to me. So it's actually my first time making this dish and I'm really curious about it. Um, and let's see how it goes. So first thing, if you're working along with us, we're gonna have our cabbage sliced already. Um, the recipe asks for half inch slice, um, but Yes, half inch slice, but um, I like to, I'm gonna try to make it a bit thicker, which means it might have to cook a little bit longer, which is totally fine. If you want a steak, you want a nice hearty steak, right? So um, you have your cabbage, you're gonna thickly slice it, and then you're gonna douse it with some oil. So I have some grapeseed oil, whatever oil you have on hand works. Um, give it a little drizzle. Y'all aren't able to see that, but I will show you. 
here. So you want just kind of enough on it. So you're gonna cook it up really well, but then also gives it room to kind of like brown as well. All right, so you got that going. And then, oh yeah, also be sure to preheat your oven uh, to 400. Um, because these are a bit thicker, I'm going to uh, raise it up to 425 to give them a nice roast. Um, so you're gonna use your spices. Um, you have some salt, I got some salt here. Sprinkle as you please. Really, this is kind of the fun part. Um, I don't know if a lot of y'all are familiar with folks from the South who cook, but um, a lot of us are taught to not really use recipes. So really, if you like salt, add some more salt. If you don't like as much salt, you can definitely add less. Um, the recipe also asks for uh, red pepper flakes. I kind of mixed my, uh, my black pepper and uh, red pepper flakes together in this eye salt pepper. It's kind of like a smoked um, red pepper that gives you a little bit of spice and um, also had that, that kind of red pepper flick. Um, that you want when you cook things. So you can sprinkle that on as well, depending on how much spice you like. All right. And one of my favorite parts is our spice, uh, is our herb blend. So the herb blend is really kind of subjected based on whatever you like to put in yours. So we have, um, this one is a mixture of, one of my favorite things to do is when the stores have the sale, on those dried herbs, I just go buck wild. So this one is a fine herb, it's a little fancy, it has chervil in it. And then this one is Italian seasoning, it has like thyme, oregano, and things like that. And they're such a fun way. Um, these were actually 99 cents each when I got them. So it's one of those fun ways to like infuse flavor um, in a low cost way, right? Um, so what we're gonna do, add that in here. Sprinkle that on top. All right. So we have that here. Sprinkle that in. It's going to look really cute when it comes out. So we're going to put that in the oven and we're going to come back to it. Cool. So one of the things with food share, when we're cooking food, we don't like to leave out the food justice element. So one of the things that I'm gonna to talk to you about today is about appropriation and erasure in, um, in, cult in food culture. Um, so specifically with this dish that I'm making today with the, um, the uh, what's it called? The Southern fried cabbage. Um, one of those things, it's one of those things that um, is really popular to cook amongst all Southern families, regardless of race, but um, it is something that is deeply rooted in um, in Black communities and our, um, our um, uh, what's it called it? Yeah, in our, in our cooking culture, right? So one of the things that you'll, you'll realize, uh, cabbage is one of those things that does connect the cultures. There's a lot of different cultural dishes that people make out of cabbage. Uh, feel free to add it in the chat if there's some that we miss. A few that, that we know of, we have the southern fried dish that we have, sauerkraut from Germany, we have kimchi from Korea, we have um, cabbage rolls from Hungary, um, and something called Jig's Dinner from Newfoundland. I think Jade had added that in. Uh, feel free to let us know more about that. I'm not as uh, experienced with that one if you wanna jump in. Um, but yeah, that's another one, coleslaw as well. And yes, and one of those things too um, with the food, um, it's also super nutritious. It packs a lot of pun uh, punch for the price that it is. Um, it's full of antioxidants, full of vitamin C, um, anti-inflammatory, high in fiber, and those are all great things that our body needs, right? Um, so also, yeah, when we're talking about the culture, um, yeah, so this dish, because it has like a southern roots, I remember when I was looking for the recipe, I kind of found it a bit tough to found, find one that um, was done by, by uh, Black folks or Black uh, food bloggers and wasn't really done in the same way I'm used to seeing it when I grew up. Um, so it was one of those ways too, when I was reading those, I was seeing how people were talking about their own personal roots to it um, versus really acknowledging the roots of where a lot of the foods come from in Southern cuisine. Um, a really great article that, um, that Jade found on this called uh, 
by um, Michael Twitty uh, called, called An Open Letter to Paula Dean. And she's one of those folks who's kind of really claimed Southern cuis cuisine, but really erased a lot of um, the, the links to Black folks in it. Um, mm -hmm. So um, a lot of great folks who are really kind of uh, taking back that power and making sure that um, uh, Black folks are affirmed within Southern food culture. Uh, Edna Price, a legend in there. Uh, Leah Chase from New Orleans. Uh, we have Dr. Jessica B. Harris, who recently just won a Beard Award. And Michael Twitty that I just mentioned, who's a, cul a great culinary historian, who's really um, been a big part of kind of uh, highlighting that and really bringing that food history, um, uh, linking that food history straight from Africa to here to the South. Um, yeah, so that's one of those things. So of course with food shares, even though we're cooking great food, we really wanna make sure people are thinking critically about their food and where it comes from um, and then how can, it can affect um, how other people consume it, right? So this food today, we have our cabbage, um, I pre-sliced it up. I like to slice it in like thin kind of ways just because it cooks faster that way. And I'm impatient about my food. Uh, one of the things you're gonna add to is an onion. I have a medium onion uh, sliced up. I kind of did a radial slice, a thinner slice as well, just so they'll match. Um, one of the things I'm adding in today um, is a plant-based beef. So a lot of things with the uh, Southern fried food, we love lard. We love uh, pork. We love fat, we love to deep fry things, everything. So um, this kind of wouldn't be the, the uh, a Southern dish if it didn't have a little bit of um, added fat into it, right? So what we're gonna do is, so we're gonna add in, we have our onions here. We're gonna add that in to cook. I kind of was, and I forgot to set this up to cook a bit more. So I'm adding some sunflower oil ooh, or some sunflower oil to make sure that um, it adds, it's a bit of a thicker oil that adds a bit more fat into it. So we're gonna let that cook up. We're gonna add in our cabbage and then we're gonna add our meat in at the end. And so feel free to keep an eye on it, um, give it a stir, and then uh, we're gonna come back to it. So I'm going to uh, hand it over to Jay. Awesome, can y'all hear me? I know I was having some audio issues earlier. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, so I will reintroduce myself just cause I know it's, uh, didn't work earlier. So my name's Jade. I'm also um, in community food programs at Foodshare with my good friend Renew here. Um, and I'm going to be showing you how to make another cabbage dish uh, just because one or two isn't enough. Uh, so we're going to be doing like a braised cabbage in a coconut milk and turmeric sauce. Um, I'm going to add a bit of curry powder in there as well and maybe some scotch bonnet to spice it up a little. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is just take about half a cabbage head, and this is great because then you can use the other half for a news recipe. Um, and you're just going to cut it into some like wedges. So let me show you here. And I cut my half uh, into five wedges here, and that's just because one of them was really small and that was kind of an accident, but I don't think it really matters. So you're going to grab a pot or a skillet. Uh, you're going to be adding some liquid to it, so you want to make sure it's like deeper, you don't want a really thin or shallow uh, pot. And you're gonna heat it up on like a medium high and add a little bit of oil. I'm gonna add some olive oil here, but any oil would work. Uh, and I'm gonna do about two tablespoons. You just wanna make sure you've got enough in there to kind of coat the bottom. Because the first thing we're doing here is just adding those wedges in to get them nice and like charred. So, throw that in there. I'm actually going to turn my fan on, and maybe Renu, can you tell me if you can still hear me when I turn my fan on? Can you hear me clearly? Or is it a bit muffled? You, you, okay, you can hear me? Awesome. Cool. So, I'm just turning my fan on because my smoke alarm does go off uh, 
very, it's very sensitive. So I'm just going to leave it on for now. Um, and I'm going to let that heat up over medium high for just a minute. You want it to get nice and kind of like almost smoking, really shiny. Uh, and we're going to throw those right in there and leave them on one side for about five minutes just to get charred. And then we'll flip it over and do that on the other side as well. So let's see here. Great. And I'll walk you through the other ingredients we're going to need. So I've already gone ahead and chopped up my onion here. The recipe calls for shallots. I do prefer shallots over onion in this recipe, but uh, I didn't have any. So I'm using onion and that's totally fine. Uh, we're also going to be using some ginger. So I believe the recipe calls for about an inch of ginger. I like to use a bit more just because I really love ginger, but that's totally up to you. So I've just got my ginger nicely minced here. You could also like slice it if you wanted to do that, if you like really like eating, like biting into ginger. Uh, and then I've got some garlic. Again, the recipe calls for two cloves, but I'm using four because I really love garlic. <laughs> and you're gonna want some sort of like a source of heat for your food. So uh, the recipe calls for green chili. You could use like a jalapeno, uh, serrano. I'm using a scotch bonnet. Uh, I always have these in my freezer. So this is easiest for me. And I also love the flavor of scotch bonnet. So this is what I'm gonna be using. Uh, my oil looks nice and heated up. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop these in there. And then once you drop them in, you can just throw a little bit of salt on there to season it. And like Renee said, if you don't like cooking with salt, you don't have to use any at all. If you like cooking with it, then go ahead. I do love salt personally, so. All right, so got those in there. Again, I'm gonna like let those chill on one side for about five minutes and we'll come back to them. Um, I've also got here my chickpeas. So I went ahead and drained and rinsed a can of chickpeas. I just used like one of those medium sized cans, but if you like love chickpeas, you could use one of those really, really big ones as well. Um, I'm also gonna be throwing a bit of broth in there. So I just have like a bouillon. If you have like a cube, you could use a cube or if you have like the boxed broth, you could use that as well. And to add to our like freezing liquid, I've got some coconut milk. Um, the recipe is like pretty heavy um, on the coconut milk. I'm probably gonna like half the amount of coconut milk we're adding in here. Uh, but you can kind of just do it based on taste and adjust as you go through. Okay, so these are really starting to sizzle over here. Uh, I hope it's not too loud for y'all. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's really, uh, yeah, there's a lot of oil flying around over here for me, which is great. It smells, smells very tasty. Uh, the last thing we want to add are a bunch of spices. So I think the three spices that um, the recipe calls for our mustard seed, some cumin, and some turmeric. And it calls for about a teaspoon of each of those. Um, if you look at the comments in the recipe though, people really seem to think that that's not enough seasoning. And I would tend to agree. I think like the more seasoning, the more spice you wanna add, the better. Uh, so I've also got some thyme here. I really like the like flavor combo of thyme with coconut milk personally. Um, I've also got some curry powder just to add a bit more spice in there. Um, as well as some like coriander seed. So I'm gonna add in my coriander and mustard seeds first and get those kind of like pop in and then we'll add in the rest of the spices afterwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip my wedges over here. Oop. This one is really falling apart on me, which is fun. Actually, I'm not gonna flip them yet because they're not as charred as I want them to be. But I can show you starting to get nice and charred here. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to leave that in for a couple more minutes. Like I had initially said. And using tongs here would be great. I think if I tried to use a spatula, they'd be falling apart even more. So tongs, good call. Um, and like Renee said, we love to talk about food justice while we're cooking. So, you know, just like a little note on cabbage is we kind of chose this one because you know a lot of folks often ask what they should do with like all the cabbage they get in their good food boxes I know it's like very uh there's a lot of it <laughs> um and the reason is you know cabbage 
grows really well here in Canada because it grows really well in cold weather. It's really like cheap to grow. Uh, it's really affordable. It's like such a great veggie that I think is really like underrated. Like people kind of like will skip or like walk by the cabbage at the store a lot of the time. But I think it has all these like really cool uses that we kind of forget about. Um, so like it's so much more affordable than something like a green leaf, like tender lettuce. Like cabbage is, I think, about a pound, like a dollar a pound here, which is so cheap, which is really great. Um, and you can really sub it in for any recipe where you're using like a tender lettuce. So you can sub it into a salad for like a crunchier salad. You could also use it like to wrap something up, almost like a lettuce wrap. So you could put some meat in there, some rice. Um, or it's really cool as well because you can do a lot of different kind of like home preservation recipes with cabbage. So like Renee mentioned earlier, things like sauerkraut or kimchi work really well at cabbage, um, which makes it great then for like extending its shelf life even longer than it already is, which is like cabbage lasts a really long time to begin with. <laughs> um, so with things like kimchi, you can make it last even longer, which is great. So you really get like a lot of kind of bang for your buck with cabbage, which is really nice. Um, and so I think it's like, you know, really cool to share all these, these hacks for, you know, stretching your budget by subbing in cabbage where um, other fresh produce might be a bit more expensive. Um, and, you know, a lot of people rely on, on using budget saving tips like this, right? It can be really helpful. Um, you know, food is something that is often kind of, the first thing that folks cut from their budgets, right? Like, especially now during a pandemic when a lot of folks are being hit really hard by uh, by food insecurity, being able to sub in cabbage instead of lettuce is, is really cool. Um, but I do think it's important, you know, it's important that we share these tips and we talk about ways we can stretch our budget, but it's also really important to remember that, you know, like doing these kinds of things to adapt um, and implementing these strategies that can be really creative is really great, but it's also not a permanent fix to food insecurity, right? So it's nice to learn and to share and exchange this knowledge, but we also need to think about, you know, what are the root causes of food insecurity and how do we actually fix it at the top versus asking people to survive by changing, you know, these little daily habits, right? Um, so it's just kind of some food for thought. And, you know, like, I think the food share good food boxes are a really cool example of a way that we're making a change where, where fresh produce is more affordable for folks. Um, and it can be really great, you know, especially in areas like racialized and low income areas where fresh produce is often um, much more difficult to access and much more expensive. Uh, but at the same time, we also need these kind of like really big system changes around things like a uh, universal basic income or a living wage, things like that, right? Um, so I encourage you, we will send in the chat a really interesting article about food deserts um, and the wording around food deserts versus food apartheid and looking at like who does have access to fresh produce and who doesn't and how that's a socially constructed thing. Um, and it relates back to power and structural poverty and systemic racism. So I encourage you to check that out. So my wedges are looking nice and charred here. I don't know if you can see that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take them out and kind of let them rest on this plate while we prep the rest of our spices and ingredients. Nice and smoky in here. Also, my wedges are falling apart. That's fine. <laughs> so the next thing you're gonna wanna do is add a little bit more oil in. My oil is all pretty much gone at this point. So I will add in about a tablespoon here. And we're gonna throw in our garlic and onion or shallot if you're using shallot and our ginger as well. Now you could, if you wanted to, you could chop up your pepper um, and you could add your pepper in at this point too. What I'm gonna do is actually throw my pepper in whole. I'm gonna poke a couple holes in it so that the spice kind of seeps out while it's braising. And then I'm gonna throw my whole scotch bonnet in there. 
Um, if you wanted to like de-seed your pepper and make it a bit less spicy, then at this point you could just chop it open, take those seeds out and dice it up and throw it in right now. So let's go ahead and add this onion. I just lowered my heat because my stove is getting pretty hot. And I'm gonna crush this garlic in here as well. Add a bit more garlic in here. I love the smell of garlic and onion. Now I'm gonna throw in my ginger. And I've got mine minced up, like I said, but you could slice it. I do love a sliced ginger sometimes as well. And just let that cook for like, honestly, even a minute is fine because it is gonna soak in that braising liquid for a while, so it'll cook in there. The next thing I'm gonna do is add in those seeds I talked about. So I've got my coriander seeds. I'm gonna add in about, eh, I don't know, like a bit more than a teaspoon. And same with my mustard seeds. And we're adding the seeds in first just to get them popping a little bit before we add in our other spices. And I'm doing about two teaspoons of the mustard seeds just because I like them. Again, this is a recipe you can totally adjust based on your own preferences, as is every recipe ever. Get these guys popping. And then the next thing we're going to be adding in is the rest of our spices. So I'm going to be adding in about everything I have left of my cumin here, which is like maybe two teaspoons. I'm kind of I realize now running low on cumin. Um, I'm gonna add in my curry powder, probably about a teaspoon of curry powder and then a teaspoon of turmeric. Um, and I might throw in a couple sprigs of thyme as well because I've got these in my fridge and I need to use them up. All right, so let's throw in this cumin. Cumin's the best. Some curry powder. Again, about a teaspoon of curry powder. I think I just added a bit more than a teaspoon now. Fine. And it's starting to smell very good in here. Okay, some turmeric for that nice color and taste. And it's a nice like immunity boosting food, turmeric, super food. And then yeah, with the thyme, I'm just gonna throw the whole sprigs in there. Um, I almost never chop thyme because if you're throwing it into any sort of liquid, like the leaves will just fall off and then you can remove the stems later, which is really helpful because it's uh, quite time consuming trying to chop those for me at least. <laughs> all right. So I've got all my spices in here. So just to review, I had my garlic, my onion, or shallot, uh, my ginger, and then my thyme, cumin, mustard, and the other spices I'm using. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add in my chickpeas now. Again, I've just got a can of chickpeas here that I uh, drained and rinsed. And mix that up real nice in there. Okay, so we're gonna get ready to braise now. I'm just gonna let my chickpeas uh, mix around with all these nice spices here for a sec. But we're gonna be adding in our coconut milk and our broth at this point. I'm gonna do about like a half and half. So like half uh, broth and half coconut milk and then I might kind of adjust it uh, after that, but we'll see. Okay. 
So I'm just using some water because I'm using the bouillon like I showed you earlier. And you can kind of add a little bit at first just to deglaze the bottom of that pot, get all that nice caramelized stuff off the bottom. Perfect. A little bit more. Then I'm going to add in my bouillon here. Um, if I can find a spoon. There we go. All right. And now I'm going to add in my coconut milk. And I'm, like I said, I'm going to do like equal parts. So I'll probably do like half this can for now. It's really hard right now. So there we go. Okay. Got our coconut milk in there and our broth. At this point, I'm going to throw in my scotch bonnet. So what I'm going to do is just use a knife and poke a couple holes in my scotch bonnet. This is helpful to get some of the flavor out of the scotch bonnet so it like seeps into your uh, freezing liquid, but also to make sure that it doesn't burst open in your pot while it's uh, cooking. You do not want your scotch bonnet to burst uh, because it is very spicy. <laughs> Um, I also just like using this method instead of chopping it up because then I avoid like getting scotch bonnet all over my fingers um, because that can be really painful as well. So I just throw that in their hole. And I'm going to give it a taste. I'm pretty happy with that flavor. I might add some red pepper flakes in, but not too many because the scotch bonnet will make it spicier. And then the last step is we're gonna go ahead and add our cabbage right back in there. And you don't need to like make sure that the cabbage is covered or anything because with a braise, it doesn't need to be completely submerged in the liquid. Just kind of chilling in there, like taking a bath. And then what you can do is just grab a spoon and kind of like baste, baste your cabbage with the liquid just so that it soaks it all up in there. So I might grab a spoon here and just kind of, oh, the spoon isn't really working. Um, but yeah, you're just like gonna pick up some of the liquid and pour it over our cabbages to get them nice and saucy. And then we're just gonna go ahead and cover this and lower it to a simmer and let it chill for like 20 minutes and then it'll be ready. So I'm gonna pass it over to Renew and I'll, I'll show you my finished project product at the end of uh, this session. Ooh, cool. Yes, so a lot has happened on my end. You, when, you, when I saw your time and I was like, I have time in my fridge too that I didn't <laughs> use up, I'm gonna throw it in. Um, so I threw that in the, a little bit in the, the cabbage dish. So. We're doing a little remix, a little remix. So, so far what's happened with the cabbage, let's bring that, oh, okay. let's bring that a little forward. So, I don't know if you can see that smoke or steam rather. And so we have, it's pretty well cooked right now. I'm just gonna stir it up. So that was just about 20 minutes. Um, really slicing it up thin really helps it to cook super quick. So um, what we did, what I ended up adding in was all of our spices. We have our salt that I added in. We have our pepper as well. I use those same uh, isot peppers. Um, I added a little bit of the herb as well as the, um, <coughs> some thyme and um, <clears throat> I also had some um, some garlic. Ooh, that steam's getting to me. Um, some garlic, um, what's it called? It's called garlic confit. We recently did a really fun, um, uh, <coughs> wow. We recently did a really fun um, uh, 
workshop with the chef through uh, Care Of, which Jade also does a, a lot of work with them through uh, doing some food share workshops as well. Um, and we learned how to make a uh, garlic confit where you like boil your garlic in um, an oil and it makes it really soft and it allows you to use it all the time. So um, use it for a longer time. So I had a few cloves of that that I um, added in and it melted in really nice. Um, so yeah, so this is kind of what, this is kind of what <laughs> it looks like. Uh, let's give it a little check into our, um, what's it called it, into our steaks as well. But one of the fun things about this is you can make a pot of it and keep it around for really, for, for as leftovers to go with anything after. Uh, one of the popular things that um, I like to eat it with um, I know corned beef is, and cabbage is real. Well, actually, I'm vegan now, so I don't really eat it with that. But before, <laughs> I used to really, really, really love corned beef and cabbage together. Um, also, uh, oh, speaking of meat, I forgot to add in our plant-based meat. So we're going to add that in, too. This was one of those ones where it said that you could um, add it in at the end, um, that it was already pre-cooked. So um, I'm going to just add that into there. Mix that in too, just to give it kind of that home feel to a feeling like maybe the corned beef, a plant-based one, or even um, if you um, if you eat pork and you like bacon, you can uh, fry up some bacon before to give it, to really infuse that flavor in it. Or smoked turkey bacon, that was one that I grew up eating a lot of too. So yeah, so we're gonna add that, have it on the side. You can have it as a, a nice side with any dish that you have. Um, and then now let's see what our, other one looks like. All right. So let's check out our steaks. So I okay. put it on here. All right. So our steaks are looking pretty good. I'm gonna see if I could lift that up for you guys to kind of show you a little bit of what it looks like. So this one may need a little bit more cooking, but it's a nice thick kind of roasted veggie. Um, I'm really interested to see if it kind of caramelizes, gets a little sweet. A little bit, a little bit. So I'm gonna let this sit in a little bit more. I think the original recipe said to cover them as well. So this one's a bit more crispier than the other recipe would have been, um, which would have made it, yeah, a bit softer and roastier. But um, but yeah, I kind of love to switch it up on the on the fly based on how I'm feeling that day. So definitely, uh, yeah, uh, I'll hand it over to Jay and uh, yeah, let us know how yours is going if you're cooking with us. Yeah, is anyone cooking with us? Is maybe let us know in the chat if you are. We'd love to like see what you're cooking if you are, or if you want to share photos afterwards, that'd be awesome. I always love to see what folks are cooking along with us. Um, I guess I can show you what's in my pot here, although it's not ready, but you can take a look. It's probably gonna look the exact same when it's done, to be honest. So we can just take a look now. It'll taste much better, but. <laughs> Let me switch my camera over. There we go. That's what we've got in our pot here. So as you can see, our cabbage like isn't fully submerged. We've got, that's my scotch bonnet there just hanging out. And actually maybe while I'm over here, I will do a little basting. So every couple minutes you can just kind of like get that nice braising liquid on top of, on top of here. Like that, yes. Ooh, it smells very good in here. I'm so excited to eat this for lunch. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, uh, let us know definitely in the chat if you are making this. Also, if you have any questions about any of these recipes, uh, for sure, just let us know. I think we've got some time for Q&A. If anyone has any questions, like, whether it's about the recipes, about cabbage in general, about the good food boxes, about food justice stuff. Uh, we've got a couple minutes to chat, so feel free.
Does anyone have their own favorite cabbage recipes? Okay, I see Nick has got their hand up. Nick, did you wanna ask a question or have a comment? I don't know if, I don't know how to unmute you, but maybe someone else here does. Hi, good, uh, one second. Okay, good, good afternoon. Thank you for hosting this. I am very uh, delighted to be with you guys. My first time cooking cabbage in a way like this in a long time. Um, only other ways I know how to do that is like um, pickling, like a char. That's, I did that with my grandma growing up, which I love. So um, the charring of the cabbage, I think is my hardest part. Cause you know, you don't really know if it's like fallen or if it's like crispin. So I just took it off from there and I just kind of put my, my ginger and my garlic in there. And I add mm. green chili cause I add green chili to everything. Cause it's just, it's what I do. So yeah. uh, and I just threw in the <laughs> mustard seeds and I got some other um, kind of, it's more my Indian style kind of hard seeds, you know, like my coriander seeds and stuff going right now. So yes. maybe another, like, hopefully I started a little bit late. I apologize, but hopefully I can show you guys in a couple minutes. So maybe. Yeah. I would love to see it. That sounds really good with those, yeah. those added spices as well. <laughs> okay, see so there's a question, Jade, what kind of pot are you using? Um, so I've just got like a Dutch oven that I'm using. It, it is very dirty on the outside. So I apologize if you can see that. That's from like baking bread in it in the oven. <laughs> uh, but it's just like, it fits quite a bit of liquid in there, but you could use a much smaller pot for this because I'm only about like a third of the way full right now. Um, so yeah, it's just it's just a Dutch oven, but you could use any kind of uh, pan or pot that has a lid and it's not super shallow. Does, it, does that answer your question, Leah? Leah? We've got... Oh, yeah, don't forget about this good food box giveaway. Thank you, Pravdi. Uh, definitely everyone who's here, check that out. It's a great opportunity. Who wouldn't want a bunch of beautiful, fresh veggies and fruits in their house? <laughs> right, right. And also <laughs> feel free to share with us, yeah, um, any um, cultural dishes that you make with cabbage. We mentioned a few and we've been making a few as well. Um, but yeah, let us know in the chat too if there's ones that we may have missed that you have made and want to share about for sure. Yeah, I mean, oh, we made Japanese style cabbage pancakes. Yum, that sounds so good. I've never had that. Yeah, I think I saw um, uh, a recipe for for one on like munchies where they used, um, what was it called? Um, 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 bonito flakes on it. And then like, when it heats up, of course, like the bonito flakes kind of move around, which is so fun. That sounds uh, That sounds very good. If anyone has like a good coleslaw recipe to share, I would love that. I'm always like on the search for a coleslaw that I really love. Um, and I would love to know people's opinions on like creamy versus like vinaigrette based coleslaw. Like what team are you on? Now, well, let's not start. <laughs> <laughs> creamy coleslaw all the way y'all creamy coleslaw let's see let's see I love a good vinaigrette but the creamy coleslaw we gotta we gotta I'm not even the sad part is I'm not even really a fan of coleslaw but if I had to eat it it would be creamy I had to be creamy interesting I like I haven't had a creamy coleslaw that I love you know yeah um Controversially, I like both creamy and vinaigrette coleslaw. Okay, yeah, same. Cool. All right. And we see up here someone who's on team creamy. All right. Yeah, it's a pretty divisive uh, conversation. I'm sorry for bringing it up. <laughs> no hey, if you want to brought up a grit, sweet grits versus savory grits, then we might have had to shut it down. But, you know. <laughs> Slack is still can get a bit contentious. I remember in one of um, the workshops for um, uh, chefs in the classroom, now virtually chefs at home, but uh, we made uh, a potato salad where we made our mayonnaise from scratch. 
So I'm feeling if you did like a coleslaw where you made like your mayonnaise from scratch to like adjust the creaminess based on kind of more what you want, that could work too. I like, I like that idea. Cause I think it's like, it's too mayo-y for me sometimes. Like I do, I have nothing against mayo. Like I love mayo in a sandwich, but sometimes like too much mayo is a bit overwhelming for me. So I like the uh, making your own kind of like aioli idea. Yeah. Okay, I see also Leah in the chat says, red cabbage sauteed with red onions served with Italian sausage. That sounds delicious. Yes. With that fennel, <laughs> get that taste of fennel in the Italian sausage. I love it. I love mm, it. That's so good. I I got a red cabbage in my good food box last year and made borscht for the first time and was pretty into that. My house really smelled of cabbage for quite some time, but it was very delicious. Yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah. Yeah. With, when it comes to cabbage for me, it really is just frying it. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't really kind of venture outside of that, but I'm really interested in this curry dish that Jade is making. It looks delicious. The charring of the, the cabbage, as Nick was mentioning, that's like a such a nice added layer of flavor. So I'm really interested to try that one on my own uh, outside of this for sure. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to eat this. Um, uh, <laughs> I think my roommate is too. I've seen him kind of hanging around, waiting. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so for sure, I guess like now we both are, yeah, we're just cool to do some Q&A. If there's any other questions, even if you had, yeah, about food share and uh, community food programs, um, things like that, we could definitely chat about those too. Let's see, we got Sydney. I'm interested to know when you're introducing new foods and flavors to kids, how do you encourage them to try it and also respect if they're resisting? Ah, well, I feel like, hmm, I'm gonna think about it a little bit. Do you wanna? <laughs> I feel like I also need to think about that. I mean, maybe, I don't know if there's any parents or older yeah. siblings in the chat right now who have some advice I'm thinking Brooke might have <laughs> something to say yeah <laughs> you know, it's funny everyone it doesn't matter what your profession is it doesn't matter what you cook hands down your kids are going to tell you they don't like it regardless <laughs> um, <laughs> I've been teaching kids about food for a very long time and I still struggle with it but how do we try new foods what do we call it do you remember do you remember what we call it? We take adventure bites. Ah. Preferably not from your nose though, right? <laughs> <laughs> we take adventure bites and we try new things, don't we? Even if it's just one tiny little bite. And then if they do take a bite, I like go to town with the praise, like make it a really big <laughs> deal, like cheering, like carrying on in a big way that they tried a new thing. Yeah, okay. So yeah, sorry, <laughs> haven't quite figured it out yet. And sometimes it is an epic fail and then I have to eat the leftovers for days and days because no one else will touch it. Um, <laughs> but sometimes it works and repetition, like just because they don't like it the first time doesn't mean you never cook that thing again. If it's something you like and enjoy. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's so great. That's so true, that adventure bites. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Jake. No, I was just going to say this reminds me of our Fuel for Fun class that we had a couple of weeks ago where we were talking about trying new things with a group of grade fours and fives. And uh, one of them had a really great idea around making like a chart of things that you think you don't like and then having little check marks of like you have to try it a certain amount of times before you decide you don't like it. And so making it like a little fun activity. And I thought that was a really cool idea that someone had. Yeah, kid definitely. approved <laughs> right right yeah definitely those two things too like yeah challenging yourself to try new things and and to be sure if you don't like a thing as well like if they say like oh I don't like celery and it's like oh have you tried celery cooked maybe you just don't like it raw or maybe you prefer it a different way so like those type of things too of adjusting even the way um, that it's prepared so I really love both of those. I'm, I'm hoping to integrate those into programming uh, once we get back to it. But yeah, definitely we do our herbal testing and that's kind of our, our, our cut and dry uh, taste test 
with um, students and either they really love the herb or they don't love it. It's kind of like cilantro. Cilantro is one of the ones we, we, we made it a challenge. So uh, kind of along the same lines of the adventure bite where you put like hashtag challenge behind anything and kids will try it immediately. Um, so we had the, yeah, the uh, cilantro challenge. They were like, I want to take the cilantro challenge. And, and then they tried and see if they, if it tastes like soap to them or not. So yeah, definitely making it a game pouring on the praise. Y'all all got it. Such, yeah, such, so many <laughs> great strategies depending. And then, yeah, um, if they decide they don't like it, totally be like, fine, it's totally great um, if you don't like it. And um, yeah, respecting that as well too when, when they say um, that they they don't actually like the food. So um, Yeah, there's like, I think a book called Don't Yuck My Yum, which talks about like respecting people's different tastes and like everyone likes different things and that's cool. So I like that one as well. Just as like a, I've also seen a fun like song on YouTube called Don't Yuck My Yum, good one. <laughs> I like it, Don't Yuck My Yum, I love that, that's a quote, it used to be on a t-shirt. <laughs> cool, cool, all right, let's see, Jay, do you want to show us how, how is it, uh, it's cooking? Sure. And maybe also, I don't know, Nick, if you're still here and wanted to show us what you're cooking, I would love to see it. But no pressure also if you don't want to. <laughs> there we go. So this is feeling pretty close to being done. Um, my cabbage is nice and like tender probably cook it a little bit longer to get it even more tender. And I think this is something you could eat like on its own if you wanted kind of as a stew or you could serve it over like some rice might be nice with this or like a different kind of grain. I don't know, maybe like quinoa or something. Mm -hmm. I like rice though. I'll probably have it with rice personally. I like how it like soaks up all that nice braising liquid. Yes. Um, and then maybe even some, I was telling Renee earlier how I'm trying to eat a bunch of bread that I baked. So I'll probably also have it with a bunch of bread because it's, there's a lot of it in my house. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's good too. And I'll throw my, with the plant-based food in it. Okay. Our finished product for the cabbage, Ooh. looking really good. This is kind of more of what it would look like down home with the bacon cut up in it. Um, and this one with our plant-based version, um, really, really good. Um, yeah. Then let's see what our steaks look like. I don't know y'all, I'm feeling a little uh, apprehensive about these steaks. <laughs> I think they might have turned out okay. It might be fine. <laughs> We'll do this little one here. So definitely quite hard on Ooh. the top, but it is, yeah, it's getting, I think the middle we may have to do a little more work on because I made them extra thick, but definitely kind of getting a nice, you know, on it. I like that. That's good. Definitely. So those are our finished products and definitely y'all. Yeah, send some photos to us if you like it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think if you want to post them on like Instagram or social media, you can use the hashtag recipe for change and like tag food share in there. We'd love to see them. Um, yeah, I, I don't think uh, there's anything else to cover unless anyone has any kind of like last minute questions or comments. Someone's got, Nick, you've got your hand up, go ahead. I don't know yeah. how to, okay, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, let's see what we can do here. I'm gonna try to see if we can, I don't know, if that <laughs> helps at all, you know, that's kind of where it's going. The cabbage yeah. took me a oh. little bit longer than I needed it to do, but thank you. This was really helpful. I trying to get my brother to eat more cabbage, so this is really <laughs> appreciate it. So I really appreciate it. This was really it nice, guys looks great how does it does it smell good in there oh it smells great um, <laughs> it's awesome. just, uh, but thank you I really appreciate it nice. thank you for coming and making that delicious food all right well Renu should we 
end it? I, I don't yeah, know if there's anything else we need to... Yeah, I think the only thing is, yeah, I'll just do a quick other reminder of the giveaway. Um, yeah, feel free um, to, to, to enter that. Um, and thanks for attending and supporting Recipe for Change. It's a, a big fundraiser we have every year and all the funds are, are used in amazing ways in our community and uh, supporting food justice and food sovereignty in our community. So thank you so much for supporting Food Chair and for joining us today. Um, yeah, and have a great one. Yeah, thank you all.